Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. It looks like I'm going to have to do four videos today again. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, but uh, I still have a lot to get to. So uh, we left off here with overpopulation and uh, this uh, writer here is saying there's a call for a new type of ethics in an overpopulated planet. Of course, that's a theory, right? Overpopulation. And uh, it was introduced um, by... Uh, by eugenicists that promote uh, Darwinism and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, these people, these global elite, uh, they want you to go away, you know. So uh, it's not just about overpopulation. It's about too many people that are a threat to their power or over the planet. So it says here, here's some of the uh, 22 shocking population control quotes uh, from the global elite. It says, March 2009, the UN Population Division Policy Brief what would it take to accelerate fertility decline in the least developed countries? Microsoft's Bill Gates, the world, uh, we already know about that one, uh, talking about using healthcare and reproductive services and vaccines uh, to lower uh, the population uh, 10 or 15 percent. Says, uh, of course, you have Barack Obama's John P. Holdren program of sterilizing women after their second or third child, despite a relatively greater difficulty. Um, says here it might be easier than implementing than try to sterilize men. It goes on, George W. Bush's science advisor, Paul Ehrlich, each person we add now uh, disproportionately impacts on the environment and life support systems of the planet. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court Justice uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, frankly, I had thought that at the time Roe was decided, there was concern about population growth and particularly growth in populations that we don't want to have too many of. A United Nations Population Fund report entitled Facing a Changing World, Women, Population, and Climate. No human is genuinely carbon neutral, especially when all greenhouse gases are figured into the equation. Then we have David Rockefeller. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. So Jacques Cousteau said in order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. CNN Founders has a total population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from present levels would be ideal. Dave Foreman, Earth First co-founder, so an eco-fascist, says th his main three goals would be to reduce population to about 100 million worldwide, destroy the industrial infrastructure and sea wilderness with its full complement of species returning throughout the world. So it sounds nice. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, if I were reincarnated, I would wish to be returned to Earth as a killer virus to lower human population levels. Then the uh, first executive director of the Sierra Club, so it's supposed to be in, about the environment, childbearing should be a punishable crime against society unless the parents hold a government license. All potential parents should be required to use contraceptive chemicals, the government issuing antidotes to citizens chosen for childbearing. Said the Planned Parenthood founder, Margaret Singer, Sanger says the most merciful thing that a family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. And finishing up, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, the United States renewed funding of reproductive health care. That's what they call it, health care, through the United Nations Population Fund. And more funding is on the way. It says they appropriated more than $648 million in foreign assistance to family planning and, i.e., eugenics. It says here, Clinton's advisor... Nina Fedorov said we need to continue to decrease the growth rate of the global population. Planet can't support more people. And the last, number 22 of these quotes, it's not really a quote. The first of the, net, uh, the new Ten Commandments on the Georgia Guidestones. Go check it out. Uh, next up, bedroom tax dilemma for social housing tenants. People living in social housing uh, who have a spare bedroom will find any housing benefit claim reduced by about 40 to 80 pounds under a welfare reform. So it goes in here, and it says that um, tenants in the north of England will be hit the hardest by introduction of so-called bedroom tax. It says the under-occupancy penalty to give an official title will protect taxpayers from having to pay for a two- or three-bedroom house for a single person. So it says some of our residents can't read or write, so although there is a, a lot of literature about it, it doesn't make any difference. They also said most tenants around here literally don't have a spare penny. Um, there is nowhere for that money to come from. So they're going to have a difficult decision to move or get into debt. And a lot of places, they don't even have smaller places to move into. says uh, they found a new place to live. It's a two-bedroom house, uh, but it's very small. It's the smallest one I could find. In fact, my spare room is a box room, and you can just uh, about get a bed in, but not much else. 
So I use that room to store my tools because I'm a laborer and I need that space. I'm really worried because at the moment I can I can keep my head above water just, but if I have to pay 45 pounds a month, uh, then I don't know what will happen. Uh, next up, uh, millions of lonely people, the tragic legacy of the left's war on families. Of course, you know, that's just a typical thing. Uh, she's raising a good a good point, but it's not about left or right. This is about the globalists, and they want to kill families. So Britain appears to be turning into a disunited kingdom of solitary and lonely people. So it says, recent figures have shown that ever-increasing numbers of middle-aged men and women are living alone. It says 2.5 million people between the ages of 45 and 64 uh, have their own home, but no spouse, partner, or children to live with them. Since the mid-90s, their numbers have grown by more than 50% goes on here and it says that uh, for the age group that is so overrepresented in the dismal figures in the post-war baby boomer generation, those who grew up in the swinging 60s and proceeded to throw over the traditional family, far worse than the damage the baby boomers did to themselves, however, has been the damage done to the links between generations. For if a parent disappears from his or her uh, child's lives, those children are far less likely to want to look after that parent when he or she becomes old and frail. Nor will children want to look after a step-parent who, even if not actively resented, will not command the same bonds of love and duty as someone's natural father or mother. This breaking of the bonds between the generations is absolutely a calamity, for beyond the uh, abandonment of people to lonely lives, there can be no community without a strong sense of duty and commitment to other people and the need to look after them. So it says, when this society is increasingly thrown overboard, it is nothing less than the idea of kinship where people are knitted together by the sense that they belong with each other. Instead, our post-religious, post-modern, post-moral society prizes above all else independence, which is seen as an essential to fulfilling one's potential without any constraints or interference by anyone else. So, so the writer says cohabitation and the family breakdown are the results of the great onslaught on marriage and the traditional family that has taken place over the past four decades and more. Results of that social experiment are now being seen as a study shows that um, by the time they are 15, little more than half of British children are still living with both their natural parents. That means nearly half of 15-year-olds are not. Students told to disavow Americanness, Americanness, I guess you could say, uh, maleness, whiteness, and heterosexuality. So it says a political science professor at Butler University asked students who disregard their Americanness, maleness, wit, whiteness, heterosexuality, middle class status when writing and speaking in the classroom a practice the school's arts and scientists dean defended as a way to negate students' inherent prejudices. So remember we were just covering about how down in Texas they were teaching that forefathers were, um, the Boston Tea Party was a terrorist act. I have my own beliefs about that, you know, about, uh, you know, we're still under the authority of the king and the Vatican. So um, I think that that whole revolution was actually uh, done by the powers that be. But with that being said, people still believe in this country. So they're just trying to uh, kill that right now. Remember this article from November 8th, now the European Union seeks to ban the family. Brussels takes aim at the famous five books portraying traditional families could be barred. Books that reinforce traditional roles can contribute to gender stereotyping. Um, this is actually what they were going to going into uh, over here as far as um, he and she and, and, and gender neutral. Yeah, here we go. He started talking about uh, gender neutral uh, terms. So same thing again. And it goes on here, says that traditional stories can damage women's career opportunities, right? they got to be independent. So uh, traditional images of mothers caring for their children or fathers going out to work could be barred from schools under proposals uh, for Br uh, Brussels. It says gender stereotyping in schools influences the perception of the ways boys and girls should behave and damages women's careers opportunities in the future. And the Daily Bale's dominant social theme is people need to let other people alone, leave them alone, I guess. And just like this last article, the students told to disavow Americanness, maleness, whiteness, and heterosexuality. All the way at the bottom, the writer says, uh, lastly, the idea that people have different views from mine is not what makes me uncomfortable. The idea that I must walk, talk, and act as the liberal arts college pleases does. Uh, I'll speak as I always have and um, says, conduct myself in a way that I deem fit. I think paying $40,000 a year should give me that basic right. 
Next up, we have why parents with disabilities are losing custody of their kids. Two years ago, Erica Johnson gave birth to her first child when she had trouble breastfeeding. A nurse soothed her by saying that many mothers find nursing hard at first, so the nurse called social services. Says that the parents uh, are both blind, which concerned the nurse and uh, caused a social worker to put their baby uh, in foster care for 57 days. So it was sickening that they assumed because we were blind, we can't take care of her. It goes on here and it says, I was angry and upset. So it says its story is just one of many that uh, humanized a 445-page report issued by the National Council on Disability about the ways in which disabled parents encounter discrimination. Two and a half men actor slams the show as filth. It says uh, Angus Jones even urges people to stop watching. So I never actually watched this show, but I guess this uh, little Angus Jones is all grown up. The half actor on Two and a Half Men has condemned the show as filth and urged people to stop watching in a testimony video for his forerunner Christian Church, The Atlantic Reports. So uh, actually he came and apologized right away, so now it's all about apologizing. I don't know why he apologized. Just say what you want to say, man. Why does everybody got to backstep and apologize about things that they meant to say to be politically correct? Because, you know, he's not, that's not his job. He's supposed to sit there and act and be an actor and entertain and program people. And he started to uh, come out of that program probably, and he didn't like what he was doing, and he wanted to uh, uh, make people aware of that. But then, of course, and he's got to apologize for doing that. Council defends taking foster children away from UKIP members. The council has refused to back down over its decision to remove three children from their foster parents because their membership of the UK Independence Party meant that they supported racist policies says here that the husband and wife who had been fostering for nearly seven years said that they were made to feel like criminals when a social worker told them their views on immigration made them unsuitable uh, carers. They defend their move by saying there are some strong views in the UK uh, IP party and we have to think of the future for the future of the children. The splitting 60s finally free of financial ties. More and more older couples are breaking up. By the time we hit our 60s, we're all ready to be free, free of mortgages, work pressures, and the responsibility of children. But some 60-somethings are also breaking free of their marriages as well, it says. In fact, uh, silver separations, as they are known, have risen dramatically in the past few years. Survey showed that uh, a third of these 60-somethings believed their finances were in the best order they had ever been compared with only 23 percent of those in their 20s 30s 40s and 50s so we call it economic warfare for a reason you can use it for social engineering I'm talking about the powers that be uh, to kill families and one way to do that is through the monetary system they use monetary uh, the monetary system and money as a means to control people um, so they say what is one of the reasons well the answer apparently is because they can finally afford to so many people don't get married or have children because they can't afford to and this is the uh, same reason so divorce rate most uh, recent statistics by country uh, United States is up there almost five for every thousand people so and this was last up updated November 99 so God only knows what it is right now but this is the divorce rates this was back in 1950 uh, 10 divorces per 1,000, and uh, right after Kennedy was uh, killed, right around that in Vietnam War, like I said, Vietnam War was uh, very, very divisive. They really changed society and fractured it after that. Uh, and what happened? Boom, divorce rates skyrocketed all up and peaked around 1980 when I was born. And yes, my parents originally got divorced. Uh, female and male-headed families, look at this. Uh, it says here that uh, female-headed families have gone up steadily from 5% uh, to almost 25% since 1950 to 2000. It's about time, see? It's about time. Toy catalog flips kids' gender roles. Swedish company lets girls wear blue and boys play with dolls. So they put out a catalog with images of girls shooting Nerf guns and boys with playing with dolls. So it's a long overdue, writes this uh, woman in The Guardian. Says it's an amazing thing that gender roles for children have become so calcified. Such petty things can be presented as radical. Uh, it says, uh, who doesn't buy the notion that boys and girls naturally prefer the toys that society decrees for them? It's interesting because what's going to happen with this, with this engineering? They don't know. They don't know what they're what, what's going to happen when they start engineering and screwing with uh, uh, the natural order of things. Um, but uh, what about the ethics of it, right? Women sue Pentagon for rights to fight in combat. Remember, I just showed an article about 
few female Marines are actually stepping up for this because they don't want to do it. So now women are suing. And that's because what? They say it's not enough, said the ACLU lawyer. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.